During this lesson, we introduce you to some of the units, definitions, and calculations used in Principles of Flight. Good understanding is essential before progressing through the course, so replay scenes that cover material you are less familiar with and make summary notes. Mass is the quantity of matter in a body. In aviation, the term body could mean a volume of liquid, such as fuel, or gas, such as air, or a solid object, such as an aeroplane. In standard international SI units, mass is measured in kilograms, designated by the letters kg. All bodies on or close to the Earth are affected by the Earth's gravitational field. All objects with mass, be they aeroplanes or air molecules, are attracted towards the Earth. The Earth's gravity vector points towards the centre of the Earth, which is locally straight down. Although gravity reduces very slightly as altitude increases, for practical purposes this is ignored. The gravity constant is 9.81 meters per second squared. The examining body uses a gravity constant of 10 meters per second squared, and this will be stated in the question. Weight is the force that a mass exerts when it is in the gravitational field. Weight acts parallel to the gravity vector and is locally taken to act straight down. The SI unit for weight is the Newton, designated by the symbol N. Weight can be calculated by multiplying the body's mass by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared. This means that a mass of 1 kilogram has a weight of 10 newtons on Earth, and a 60,000 kilogram aeroplane has a weight of over half a million newtons. The force of weight is taken to act from a single point within the body, which is called the center of gravity. An aircraft's weight acts from its center of gravity. For an aeroplane to maintain stable flight and have sufficient control, the aeroplane's center of gravity must be within a safe narrow range. In flight, an aeroplane rotates about its center of gravity. This means that the aeroplane always rolls around its center of gravity. When the aeroplane's nose moves up or down, it is pitching around the center of gravity and when the aeroplane's nose moves left or right, it is yawing around the center of gravity. We will now look at the unit of distance used in principles of flight. The SI unit for distance is the meter, designated by the letter M. But aviation mixes the metric units with the older imperial units of the foot, statute mile and the nautical mile. You must memorize that there are 6,080 feet in one nautical mile, 5,280 feet in one statute mile, and 3.28 feet in one meter, together with the other probably more familiar conversions shown. Due to the constant mix between SI and other distance units, a pilot must have the ability to convert between these units quickly and accurately. Using the given conversions and your calculator, answer these questions. Type your answer in the appropriate boxes and then click Submit. Look at and check your workings. If unsure, repeat this section before continuing. Having conquered the various units of distance, we can now look at speed. Speed is the rate of covering distance, so speed is distance divided by time. Some of you may already be familiar with the distance speed time triangle. Taking the horizontal line as a divide 
It reminds you that speed is distance divided by time. The SI unit of speed is meters per second, which is used in aviation in some countries. In the UK and many other countries, horizontal speed is measured in knots, which is nautical miles per hour, and vertical speed in feet per minute. In aviation, it is important to be able to convert between these speeds roughly in your head. Two knots is roughly one meter per second. This means to find the approximate speed in meters per second, you halve the number in knots. For example, an aeroplane flying at 300 knots true airspeed is therefore flying at approximately 150 meters per second. Conversely, one meter per second is roughly two knots. So, if you were given a wind speed in meters per second, you would double it to get an approximate wind speed in knots. So, for example, a wind of 10 meters per second is approximately 20 knots. A force is a push or a pull in a defined direction and is measured in newtons. In the first lesson, we introduced the forces acting on an aeroplane, which were lift, weight, drag and thrust. A force can cause a mass to accelerate, and these three terms are related by the equation F equals MA. A force is said to do work when it moves an object a distance. The amount of work done depends on the size of the applied force and the distance it moves the object. The unit of work is the joule. Calculate the work done in this question. Type in your answer and click on the submit box. Work is found by multiplying the size of the force by the distance the force moves the object. However, no work is done when a force does not move an object. Prior to the takeoff run, when the engines are spooling up and the aeroplane is held on the brakes, there is considerable thrust, but because the aeroplane is stationary, there is no work done. Power is the rate of doing work and is therefore expressed in an equation as power equals work divided by time. The unit of power is the watt, which is designated by the letter W. Returning to our previous example of an aeroplane on a runway with 150,000 newtons of thrust, calculate the power to cover 50 meters in 5 seconds. Type your answer in the box and click to submit. Power is found by dividing the work done by the time it was achieved in. Because power is the rate of doing work, if no distance is covered, there is no power. The last part of this lesson looks at energy and Newton's laws of motion. We will first look at energy, which is measured in joules. There are many forms of energy, but it is kinetic energy that we will look at in more depth for principles of flight. Kinetic energy is the energy a body has because of its motion and depends on the mass of the body and the square of its speed. Air density at mean sea level on an average day is 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. Although we rarely think about it in our day-to-day -day lives, a cubic meter of air is therefore approximately 1.225 kilograms. This means that when air moves, 
or there is relative motion between it and an aeroplane, it has considerable kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is found by squaring the air's speed in meters per second by the mass of the cube of air and then halving it. Therefore, a cube of air traveling at 30 knots, which is 15.45 meters per second, has 146 joules of energy. Now let's consider the relative motion between still air and a flying aeroplane. Relative to an aeroplane flying at 100 knots, which is 51.5 meters per second, a cubic meter of air has 1,625 joules of kinetic energy. However, because kinetic energy varies with speed squared, at 200 knots, which is 103 meters per second, the same cubic meter of air would have 6,498 joules of kinetic energy. Notice that when the speed doubles, there is four times the kinetic energy. We will now look at Newton's laws of motion and give examples of why they are relevant to principles of flight. The first law is that a body will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless acted on by an external force. It is highly relevant when looking at an aeroplane in steady straight flight because to fly in a straight line at the same speed the opposing forces must be equal. Newton's first law helps us to recognize that an aeroplane has inertia. When stationary, it resists moving. And once moving, resists stopping, moving faster, or changing direction. The magnitude of this inertia depends on the body's mass, with a heavier object having more inertia. A heavier body is therefore harder to start or stop moving. Newton's second law shows that when a force is applied to a body, its acceleration is proportional to the size of the force and inversely proportional to the object's mass because a heavier object has more inertia. Newton's second law has obvious implications on takeoff as the aeroplane must accelerate to reach its takeoff speed and will do so quicker if the engine thrust is greater or if the aeroplane has less inertia because it is lighter. Newton's third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It is the reason why a rocket or jet engine which forces air backwards gives the rocket or aeroplane a thrust force forwards. In summary, this lesson has looked at the definitions and units that are needed in principles of flight together with Newton's laws of motion. Look again at the distance and speed conversions. There are 5,280 feet in a statute mile and 6,080 feet in one nautical mile. As an approximation, halve the knots to find meters per second. You were then introduced to Newton's three laws of motion. Finally, to revise the calculations that you have met in this lesson, complete the following questions, entering your answers in the appropriate boxes, and then click Submit.
complete the following questions, entering your answers in the appropriate boxes, and then click Submit. Check your workings and ensure that you are happy with the calculations. If you found any sections of this lesson difficult, go back and review them before ending the lesson.